like to talk a little bit about the third eye or the brow or forehead chakra. It is often also identified with the pineal gland, which is also an eye-like structure which is in the center of the brain. Um, there are a lot of theories about the pineal gland and it is of course very important in setting a lot of rhythms in life. But I'm not so sure that it is indeed an organ which gives us clairvoyance as such. Um, one of the reasons for me to think that is that with different animals who have pineal glands in different locations and sometimes much more developed uh, and much more active than humans, I don't really see a big difference in their spiritual abilities. So I think it's very much of a modern uh, attempt to reconcile uh, spirituality with science, but I don't think it's actually uh, based on a lot of things. It's also very difficult to do experimental research because removing the pineal gland would be rather detrimental. And fortunately, because of its location embedded quite deep in the brain, it's very unlikely to sustain brain damage. But as a result, the exact spiritual effects of the pineal gland are still a little bit uncertain. What is true is that the chakra and also in a way the center of the head are very important energy centers. All the other chakras, they all have their own programming. So the first chakra is really about connecting the spirit to the body, the second about uh, having desires, having a direction in your life, the third about starting to move, starting to act, manifesting yourself, the heart about connection, the throat about not so much an individual connection or an emotional connection but rather uh, being a part of society. And in a way all these chakras from one till five are enough to create a completely functioning human being. But that human being would be working a little bit on automatic pilot. So there are all these different centers all competing for each other to be the dominant one and then as a result you act upon one or several of these centers. But we are not machines who are simply acting out all these impulses, we make decisions. And this is where the forehead chakra comes in, it's our decision center. The forehead chakra is able to take energies from all these different energy centers and combine them into kind of a, a whole. So within the sixth chakra, it's kind of a kaleidoscopic image of all the different energy centers in our bodies and also of all the impulses we get from our environment. So it is like a theater a little bit where we can see the whole of our being. But it is a very imperfect theater because of course not every chakra is equally strong so not all elements in the theater are represented equally. Um, also there is a force of habit so if we've done certain things before or thought certain things before, we're very likely to follow these habits, these pre-existing patterns, rather than to see anything new. It's a little bit like driving home over the same road which you always take. And you're not seeing the environment anymore, you're just seeing your destination. You want to go from here to your home. You're not looking around at all the flowers and all the peoples and whatever is happening in the side streets, you're not a curious tourist anymore. And the same goes for our third eye. It can also become uh, overwhelmed, it can also become a little bit jaded with the same routine again and again and again. The third eye is often also used not merely for uh, self-awareness and meditation, but also to stimulate energetic awareness, 
things like clairvoyance, clairaudience, um, premonitions. And all these things can also be gained by attuning the third eye. But attuning the third eye itself is not enough. It's a combination of the heart chakra and the third eye, which gives us this information. The heart chakra is necessary to create a connection. And once this connection is there, then it needs to be decoded or made conscious all the things we are sensing from our connection. And this process of, in a way, deciphering the information is done here. Many people are wondering but how to work with energies, how to do all these things, and um, they're in a way looking for a book which will tell them exactly what to do. Um, the reality is you don't need it. It's just like breathing or beating your heart. Uh, there is no book which tells you how you should breathe or how to make your heart beat. But in the same way our energy bodies function without our conscious effort. But like breathing we can alter the actions of our, con of our energy body through conscious effort. And the main thing is not to overthink things. Because we have a limited amount of attention, limited amount of energy. And one of the functions of that third eye is to filter, to say like, okay, this is important, this is something you should pay attention to, and this is something you should push into the background and forget about. And what we find is generally that survival signals tend to move to the front very quickly. So. Uh, sudden noises, uh, sudden events, a movement, um, they draw our attention. And also things we know how to process, like uh, letters, words, uh, a language we know, they draw our attention a lot more quickly than a language we don't know. And our name is of course very much an attention trigger. And these things jump to the front because there's very little processing time. We know how to process these things, so immediately they move to the front. If we start moving energies or trying to see energies, it is not such a big habit as reading is. Um, so it takes a lot more time. And as a result, other things tend to jump to the front and push our energetic experiences to the background. So many people say, well, but I can't see energies, I can't smell energies, I can't hear voices, um, I'm not a spiritual person, I'm not a sensitive person. And usually this is not true. It's just that, that people don't know how to listen to that part of themselves. And of course there are differences in sensitivity. Not everybody's equally sensitive. But generally, limiting factor is the third eye, not the other chakras or the energy body. One of the important things is also to get the right processing speed. You could say everything runs on a different frequency, just like a radio station where you have a tuning button where you tune into a higher or a lower frequency, to long wave radio or short wave radio. In the same way, also, the third eye is attuned. And if it is attuned to thoughts, to processing things with your mind, it's a very high frequency. Information comes very rapidly, you make decisions very rapidly, you categorize things very rapidly. So it is very much about having a very speedy production, not a very in-depth sensation. And for emotions, for feelings, and also for spiritual sensations, you need to shift down several gears to get into a correct consciousness mode, into a correct processing mode. So thoughts are generally thought up really within a second. If you're talking about emotions, you're talking usually about periods of at least 20 seconds, so that is 20 times as long before you can realize 
what you're feeling. Am I angry? Am I sad? Am I surprised? Am I happy? Am I in love? These things do not present themselves in a split second like a verbal thought does. It's a much slower process. And the sensations of our energetic environment, they are even slower. It's often up to two minutes before a sensation will crystallize itself. So you need to be patient and to refrain from going into a higher gear. We often have the habit of if something doesn't work, okay, then think about it. Because your thinking will provide a solution. But this is not the case if you're talking about spiritual development. Thought is in a way much more of an interference for working with energies than that it's helping you. So really take the time, allow the sensation to show itself, to unwrap itself, to blossom. And when we have a very critical mental mindset, this becomes very difficult. Because the brain is in a way in a constant state of hallucination, of trying different images. Um, so for instance, if you're looking at me, you're seeing a human male. But at the same time, your brain has a whole store of images of dogs, of cats, of donkeys, of elephants. And as soon as there is an impulse, it is compared to all these other impulses, like am I seeing an elephant, am I seeing a camel, am I seeing a donkey? And the closest match will be activated. So the image of me will match with a human, so you will see a human instead of a donkey. And this system of matching and also discarding things which don't match is a big problem if you're trying to develop your energetic sensitivity. Because your energetic sensations, they don't really match, they don't really map very easily. So they tend to be discarded by the brain because they're not strong enough, they're not active enough to reach a consciousness state. You're not aware if you're looking at me that you're contemplating seeing a donkey. But if you have been seeing lots of donkeys, thinking about donkeys, been petting donkeys, if donkey is foremost in your mind, then this pattern will also step forward. Am I seeing a donkey again? Oh no, it's a human this time. And there will already be some consciousness. So it is very important to build a habit, a habit of working with energies, of listening to your emotions, listening to your instincts. And if you have this habit, then your mind is also already gearing down and also in a more of an explorative mode of trying to find out what is in front of it. Because energetically it is not immediately clear, you don't have a library full of images of donkeys and humans and monkeys and cats and dogs and whatnot. And you need to build up this spiritual library through experience. This is why it is very nice in the beginning of your spiritual development if you can share with other people about the sensations you're having. Because in the beginning these sensations will be very indistinct. So just like a baby which is learning how to see or listen, it's all just a blur. And in the beginning we only sense this blur, we sense a little pressure or a tingling feeling in our hands, or warmth or cold, and that will be all that we can make of it. And we can have a sensation that there's a lot of energy or there's little energy without knowing exactly why. And as we deepen our experiences, we can discern more and more detail. We can discern higher from lower energies. We can discern life force from elemental powers. And as we immerse ourselves in this new language of energy, we learn to speak it. We become more and more proficient. But this is a process which takes months or years. The fortunate thing is that we actually have had a lot of experience because already animals are seeing energies are seeing auras and working with them. So from our previous lives we have these experiences, we have these memories of how to work with our energy bodies. 
but because of our survival mechanisms this is usually background processing and this is fine because our energy bodies are working just like we are breathing so energy is being exchanged we're nourishing ourselves we're sending out signals we're receiving signals it's all a background program but if we want to work with it actively if we want to become a healer or a reader or really to involve ourselves more deeply in our own spiritual development then it is good to develop an active consciousness an active control and this requires the involvement of the third eye so one of the first things you need to do to develop yourself this way is to limit the mental energies which exist in the third eye so in a way you have to choose to become a little bit more slow a little bit more stupid <laughs> to work as a spiritual person and it doesn't mean that you always have to be in this state it's okay you can switch you can be at your job and be a very bright quick minded person and then you can turn into a healer and you slow down and you go into a more natural rhythm of working of thought which is also slightly healthier because this very rapid thinking also produces a lot of stress hormones and also an energy imbalance where a lot of our energy moves up towards the head which means that we remove it from our pelvic area and the pelvic area is actually used to yeah, sustain our energy bodies so we're actually pulling the black batteries out of our maintenance system and putting it all in the active system by thinking too much so thinking is work at least for your energy body it is very tiring and exhaustive work if you don't occasionally take time to get the energy back down one of the other problems which often happens when people are start to work with their third eye is that they think that putting more energy in it will improve things and the opposite is true um, when a person is trying to make something out in the physical world you need to categorize more deeply like what is it that I'm seeing what is there in the distance what is written here and by applying more energy um, the dichotomy between what is noise and what is the real signal becomes bigger so it is in a way we reduce the background noise by putting more energy in the third eye so we can read more quickly we can think more quickly because there's less confusion because the other patterns are pushed more into the background the dominant pattern is pushed more into the foreground but if we try to do this while trying to read energy then the effect is very detrimental because what we're putting into the foreground are our thoughts and the sensations of our physical body what am i seeing with my eyes what am i hearing with my ears what am i feeling with my physical hands and these physical sensations will blur out and push to the background even further the energetic sensations so it is very important to break this habit of shoving energy into your head if you're uncertain you need to have a completely opposite pattern if you want to know something on an energetic level don't put the energy in your head put the energy in your heart move the energy downwards to the heart and because the heart will become stronger the energies which you're receiving will become stronger and they will be more likely to break the consciousness threshold so a good energetic perception is not achieved by focusing on the third eye it's achieved by focusing on the heart and unfortunately many spiritual disciplines actually have that quite wrong and they're teaching incorrectly several of the functions of the third eye also very much functions of the brain so the two are interwoven quite tightly because for the third eye to function it actually accesses a lot of energies in the brain memories in the brain experiences in the brain 
Uh, so the brain is a pattern matching system, not just of neurological signals, but also of energetic signals. The brain is also kind of a holographic memory of energies. So a lot of energetic patterns are stored there. Um, and it is more of a link. So a lot of the things we experience, they exist on the places where we experience them in the energy body. But the brain contains links so we can access the experiences of our heart chakra, of our third chakra, of our legs and of other things. So you could see the brain a little bit as an index system to different times, different experiences, different locations. So it's, your brain is in a way the phone book which is being read by your third eye. I hope this has given you some understanding of the importance of the third eye for spiritual development and how to use it in a proper manner.